I'm Dr. Paul Codelco. I'm an interventional cardiologist here at Sumner Regional Medical Center. In the, in the simplest terms, a heart attack is the abrupt cessation of blood flow to the heart muscle. And the heart muscle then becomes damaged or injured. The heart itself is a muscle. Uh, it's about the size of your fist. It sits right kind of in the middle of your chest. And it beats about 100,000 times a day. And it itself needs oxygen and blood flow and nutrients to, uh, to do its job every single day efficiently. The heart is fed by three different pipes, one that goes to the front of the heart, one that goes to the side of the heart, and one that goes to the back of the heart. If any of those pipes become clogged up, usually with plaque uh, from smoking or things like that, and, and, and the blood flow is interrupted, that heart muscle that has been re receiving that blood flow through that pipe will become very injured and, and, and damaged, and that leads to that can lead to the, the biggest complications of a heart attack, which unfortunately can be death in about 10 to 20 percent of individuals. The symptoms of a heart attack vary from the patient to patient. Uh, the most common would be very tight squeezing, an oppressive sensation, right usually in the middle of the chest, almost like a vice or a squeezing sensation. But it often will move up into the shoulders, even even into the back. Some people will even describe pain all the way down both arms. Uh, women will often describe pain in their jaw, sometimes even more so than men. So, and, and the more symptoms you have and the longer it lasts, the more likely that you're actually suffering a heart attack. One of the other, one of the other hallmark symptoms of an active heart attack is, the, is, in addition to the discomfort, is the sudden onset of rather severe cold drenching sweats. Uh, this happens probably in about half or more of all patients. And again, anytime somebody has any symptom like that, they need to have uh, urgent medical attention. The risks for a heart attack um, are fairly consistent. Uh, people who smoke a lot, who have diabetes, it's not well controlled. Uh, high blood pressures are not well controlled. Uh, if they have a strong family history or a genetic predisposition to heart disease, they're certainly at the highest risk. But for, there are some risk factors you can't change. Everybody has a birthday every year. The older you get, you just have a higher chance of developing vascular disease. It's very, it's very common in our country because of our lifestyles overall. So we, we, we try to modulate those risk factors to lower a person's, person's risk, uh, you know, encouraging regular exercise, tobacco cessation, good cholesterol control, uh, getting on the right medications for that, like aspirin, uh, different medications like statins. If some people don't like to take statins. They hear you know, some horror stories about them, most of that which is inaccurate. Statins are very important medicines, not because they lower cholesterol, which they do lower cholesterol in your bloodstream, but they're a very potent anti-inflammatory. And, we, and we've recognized in the past several decades that it's not just the risk factors, it's the infl inflammation in a person's system that gets turned on that brings these heart attacks on. So lowering that inflammation is what we're really trying to strive for. There's a lot of other studies looking at other avenues to to lower that inflammation to prevent the heart attack in the first place. Once a heart attack starts and, and individuals developing the discomfort and, 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 uh, and the pain, it's of their best interest to you know, get, it, get to the nearest hospital or call 911 as fast as you can. Because we, we talk about in, in heart disease or heart attacks, time is muscle. The faster that they can get attention, uh, not just with the medications that will be delivered like aspirin and blood thinners, but getting to the cardiac catheterization laboratory where we actually put a little wire in and a little tube in to open up the pipe to get the blood flow going again to restore the heart muscle strength, that is the, that is the key. If, if, if an individual waits too long, um, sometimes the horse is out of the barn and they, you know, they may get to the hospital, but the heart muscle is irrecoverable. We can't fix it. So they need to get there in the, in the first sign they're having symptoms, but certainly within the first several hours gives us the best chance to improve their, uh, their chance of surviving the heart attack and their quality in, uh, of life and their longevity in life.